the stuff is labeled potpourri. It's the moment local governments and law enforcement officials in Maryland have been waiting for. I defy anybody to take a package of this that's labeled potpourri and show me how this resembles potpourri. As of October 1st, the sale and possession of synthetic marijuana is illegal in the state. It's a designer drug where nail polish remover mixed with chemicals is sprayed on dried herbs, sold and then smoked to get a high, similar to that of marijuana. Only this drug is nothing like real marijuana and can lead to serious health effects. Last year, the federal government took steps of its own to ban these drugs with the Synthetic Drug Abuse Prevention Act. But despite state and federal efforts to try to regulate these drugs, a simple Google search pulls up dozens of websites of companies saying that they are willing to ship these drugs in mass quantities right to your door. So who exactly is behind this so-called potpourri? I decided to find the owners of one of the more popular brands, Mr. Nice Guy. And the worst part is also the way that they have it packaged, it's, it's almost like Pop Rocks and they have like Scooby-Doo on the front of them. The website looks normal enough. The contact page feels official. But when you look up that address, turns out it's a UPS store. Lots of internet companies run their businesses using P.O. boxes though, so let's keep digging. Mr. Nice Guy allegedly buys its products from Kratom Labs with yet another official looking website, only it's fake. You see that phone number at the top? It leads to a Philadelphia office for personal injury attorneys who claim they have never heard of Kraton Labs. In reality, Mr. Nice Guy is two guys, Dylan Harrison and John Sheely. Their secret operation came crashing down on May 21st of last year when the warehouse they produced these drugs in exploded. They were charged with unlawful distribution of controlled substance analogs. Each of them will serve a reduced prison sentence of just over a year. With Mr. Nice Guy out of business, why are its products still on the market? Because there's no regulation, uh, that brand may not be made by the same person across the entire United States. Type synthetic marijuana bags into the internet and a whole slew of manufacturers pop up saying they will sell the bag with popular brands like Scooby Snacks on the front. I quickly came in contact with a man named Hank, who lives in Guangdong, China. Not only did his company offer to ship me the bags, but they also promised to get them past U.S. Customs. He even sent me a picture of some options. So now that you know how to get the bags, how do you fill them? What we found is that many of these chemicals are coming from overseas, particularly China, which makes our job even more challenging. Challenging because China doesn't have the same standards for drug production as the U.S. Challenging because U.S. relations with the country are already shaky. And challenging because these chemicals are so difficult to test for, one wrong accusation could fray those international ties. Many of those chemicals are falsely labeled for medical research or for cleaning products. Once the chemicals make it to our shores, it's up to dealers to mix them with the leaves. The owners of Mr. Nice Guy were using cement mixers to mix together the chemicals and the leaves. So what ends up happening is from package to package, you may get a co one concentration that's much higher of drug than in another package. Karen Dobner's son Max died in a car crash after smoking synthetic cannabinoids. Karen tracked down the dealer of Max's drug who explained how he made them. His son determined about, about how much to spray on the plant material. And he sprayed it randomly on plant material in Tupperware containers. With crude methods like that, it should come as no surprise that there's also variability within each package. These packets sell anywhere from $30 to about 100 bucks a pop in what is being described as a $7 billion worldwide industry. So where are the profits going? What we found, which was very scary, is that drugs coming from China or coming to the United States ends up in shops owned by Middle Easterners. The Middle Eastern uh, shop owners here in the United States are shipping their money back into li Middle Eastern countries, into places that should give Americans pause. So when you're abusing drugs in this country, 
you're financing either directly or indirectly, you could potentially be financing terror operations across the globe. Groups that want to kill us. That's a really scary thought, and it's real. Adding yet another wrinkle in the fight against these synthetic substances. So there you have it. With a few simple internet searches, I just showed you how easy it is to still get your hands on these drugs ready made. And more alarmingly, how easy it is to get the different components needed to create these drugs on your own. It's just the next great frontier in the never ending war on drugs, only this one has no simple solutions. In Washington, Megan Lopez, RT.